Tis Quashers on cylinders, and Mademoiselle voulez vous danser. Tis Quashers cylindrical shells, we miss you, je veux bien danser. Tis Quashers on cylinders, we miss you, je veux bien danser. Tis Quashers cylindrical shells. So what we're going to see in this video is another method to calculate the volume of solids of revolution, which is to use cylindrical shells instead of discs or washers. Okay, so what I want to do now is calculate the volume of the same solid of revolution that I studied in the previous video, but using a different method. So instead of slicing the solid into washers, I'm going to slice it into cylindrical shells. So let's see how it goes. So here is a sketch of the region that I'm rotating about the x-axis. So how can I slice the solid of revolution? Well, one way to do it is to first slice the region into vertical rectangles, just as I did in the previous video, and then rotate these rectangles about the x-axis to get washers for the typical slice. But that's not what I want to do now. So another way of doing it would be to slice the region into horizontal rectangles. So these are rectangles of equal width, and I'm going to call the width dy. Now what will the typical slice for the solid of revolution look like? Well, if I rotate this horizontal rectangle about the x-axis, I'll get something like that, which is only half of the slice. So more precisely, if I draw what the typical slice would look like, I'll get something like this, which is what we call a cylindrical shell. So this is the typical slice for the solid of revolution. Okay, so now I want to calculate the volume of a typical slice, and then sum overall slices to get the volume of the solid of revolution. So the volume of a typical slice I will call dv, and this is the volume of this cylindrical shell here. So how do I calculate that? Well, one way to do it would be the, to cut the cylindrical shell here, and then unwind what you get, and you end up with a long strip here, and this is what you want to calculate the volume of. All right, so what do we know about this strip? Well, one thing that we know is that the width here is what we call dy. Now we also want to find what the height is, so I'm going to call the height h, and as far as the length of the strip is, well if you see where it comes from, this is actually the circumference of the cylindrical shell, so this will be 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the cylindrical shell. So putting that together I get that the volume here dv will be equal to 2 pi r times h, the height, times the width, dy. So what I need to do now is uh, find expressions for r and h as functions of y. Okay, so let me go back to the sketch of the region in the xy plane and try to identify what r and h are. So let's start with r. So r is the radius of the cylindrical shell, so it's going to be given by the length of this line segment here. So in other words, it is given by the y-coordinate of the horizontal rectangle, which is just y, minus the y-coordinate of the axis of rotation, which is 0 because I'm rotating about the x-axis. So in other words, capital R here, the radius of the cylindrical shell, is just little y. Now what about h, the height of the shell? So on the graph, it looks like this. So its length here is given by taking the difference between the x-coordinate of a point on the curve y equals to x squared, and the x-coordinate on the point uh, of a point on the curve y equals to square root of x. So in other words, I'm taking the difference between the x-coordinate of a point on this curve minus the x-coordinate of a point on this curve, but I want to rewrite everything in terms of y. So here the x-coordinate on the curve y equals to x squared will be given by square root of y minus the x-coordinate of the point on the curve y equals to square root of x, which is given by y squared. So I'm solving for x for these two curves, dy. And I can finally just uh, simplify this a little bit by multiplying in uh, the y here. So I get y to the 3 half minus y cubed dy. And this is the volume of a typical slice. Okay, so the last step is to sum over slices, which means integrate dv. So to calculate the volume of the solid of revolution, I want to evaluate the integral of dv. And I need to figure out the limits of integration, so here I'm integrating in y. So I want to integrate between the y, the lowest y-coordinate on the solid to the hyper, highest y-coordinate of the solid. I calculated in the previous video that the point of intersection here at coordinates 1, 1. So in other words, here I'm integrating between y equals to 0 to y equals to 1. 
All right, and then I can substitute the expression I just calculated. 2 pi times y to the 3 half minus y cubed dy. I can certainly evaluate this integral. What do I get? So y integral of y to the 3 half will give me 2 over 5 times y to the 5 half minus 1 over 4 y to the 4th power between 0 and 1. What do I get? I get 2 pi times 2 over 5 minus 1 over 4. And if I put everything on a common denominator, I'll get 2 pi times uh, 8 minus 5 over 20, which gives me 3 pi over 10, which is indeed the same answer that we obtained in the previous video. So we did end up with the same answer as in the previous video here, which is great, but the calculation was quite different. Right? We did not evaluate the same integral. So that's interesting. Now, in that particular example, you could have calculated the volume of the solid of revolution in either way. You could use either the washer method or the cylindrical shell method. But sometimes you cannot use both, or one of the two methods will be a lot faster than the other one. So it's very important that you know how to use both methods. Okay, so let me end this video by summarizing how you can calculate the volume of a solid of revolution using the cylindrical shell method. So the idea is to slice the solid into cylindrical shells, calculate the volume of a typical slice, and then sum over slices. Now the volume of a typical cylindrical shell will be given by the product of the circumference of the shell, 2 pi r, times the height of the shell, h, times the width of the shell. Now if you're rotating about a horizontal line, the width will be given by dy, and you'll want to rewrite r and h as functions of y. While if you're rotating about a vertical line, the width of the shell will be given by dx, and you'll want to rewrite everything as functions of x. And finally, you want to sum over slices, which means integrate dv, and you integrate either in x or y, depending on whether you're rotating about a vertical or a horizontal line.